Weirdo Benjo. Hello there everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my new VR games roundup for December 2022. You might have noticed I've changed the thumbnail style for this video. I've been doing these videos for probably over a year now and I've basically had the same thumbnail the entire time. It's like a Quest 2 floating in space with an explosion behind it for some reason. Not entirely sure why, I guess I just thought explosions were cool. But I'm trying to tie all my thumbnails together, keep one clean style and I think this is better but let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. Now it might be the last month of 2022 but that doesn't mean we've run out of new VR games to be excited about. This month does have a few heavy hitters. Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter 2 is probably the one you're all excited to play and probably the one you're playing right now because it comes out today on Quest 2. I won't waste any more time, let's jump in and have a look at all the VR games releasing this December. Kicking December off in the goriest way possible is Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter 2, easily the most anticipated VR release of the month for most people and a follow-up to one of the best VR games of all time. However, 1st of December is just the Quest 2 release. The PC VR version is still in development and will be launching in February 2023, with PSVR 2 following in March. Now I've been going hands-on with the game for about two weeks now and it's definitely more of the same Saints and Sinners goodness that players enjoyed so much the first time around. With an intense new storyline, a couple of genuinely imposing antagonists and a bunch of incredibly satisfying new weapons, the chainsaw might be the best VR weapon ever, this sort of sequel should keep fans of the original happy. Quest 2 owners can pick this one up today if they're brave enough and I hope you're all ready to head back into the blood-soaked streets of New Orleans. Can I show this trailer on YouTube? It's got bums and boobs and nipples. I just had a Resident Evil 2 playthrough video age restricted because it had a lady's bum in it. So maybe this is the trailer that finally kills the entire channel. On the 6th of December, Gesture VR is releasing onto Steam and much like Vermillion, it's a fantastic looking application for anyone who has an artistic bone in their body. Learn or practice drawing figures with 3D models for reference that can adopt a ton of different poses or stances. It's like attending a life drawing class in the comfort of your own home with an endless supply of models for you to practice your art with. I'd love to see a Quest version and more specifically a Quest Pro version that takes advantage of the pass-through, opening up the doors to drawing real-life subjects on your digital canvas. The best looking VR game ever screamed every VR YouTuber who has made a video about hubris already. There's no denying that the appeal and allure of this new PC VR title has been its visuals for quite some time now. Hubris is a gorgeous sci-fi adventure game that will no doubt scratch the itch for all VR users looking for an experience with a high level of visual fidelity, but it remains to be seen how deep the experience is, how varied the gameplay loop might be, and ultimately how long it lasts. If the combat, exploration, movement mechanics and story all come together successfully to complement the incredible visuals, then Hubris could be something very special indeed. I've yet to jump in myself, I've been saving that for full release, but I will be checking out the experience for launch on the 7th of December and hopefully I'll be discovering a brand new VR gem that's deserving of all the hype. It's far from a new game, but I have to mention that Gorilla Tag is finally coming to the official Quest 2 store on the 8th of December. With over 46,000 reviews and ratings on App Lab, Gorilla Tag is actually the most rated Quest 2 application to date, even surpassing the juggernaut that is Beat Saber, which currently sits on 45,500 ratings. This wacky social hub with its easy to understand but hard to master movement system should have really been on the Quest 2 main store a long, long time ago. It might not be for everyone, but there's no denying its impact and popularity amongst the younger players in the Quest 2 user base. One of the very best PC VR roguelite shooters explodes onto the Quest platform on the 8th of December. Compound really is a must-own VR title and I'm so excited it's finally going to be available to a whole new audience. It's a randomized roguelike shooter that pushes players to duck, dodge and strafe around enemy fire with its tough as nails difficulty and gorgeous retro FPS aesthetic. Honestly, from the moment I first played this one I was hooked. The weapons feel great, the environments are bright, vibrant and varied and the enemies come at you thick and fast. It's definitely a VR experience for those who 
who crave a challenge, but it's not so hard as to become unwelcoming or inaccessible. Compound is out on the 8th of December, and I think you should all buy it. Treat yourself to an early Christmas present. Hey, do you want to see one of the worst trailers I've ever seen for a video game? Check this out. Now outside of that terrible trailer, there isn't much gameplay footage from World War II's Tank Arena VR available. I found a little early access gameplay from a beta, but beyond that there haven't been any official updated gameplay trailers from the developer or publisher. Now World War II's is a 4v4 tank based deathmatch game. You operate your own chunky cartoon tank and pilot it around to destroy the enemy team with normal weaponry and crazy special abilities. Fingers crossed we get a better trailer that more accurately showcases the potential of this one before release on the 8th of December. Limelight VR is a perfect example of a simple yet addictive video game. A series of minimalist puzzles that all take place along a series of endlessly connected lines might not sound like the most thrilling experience, but once you're in you'll find the time slips away effortlessly as you tell yourself just one more, I'll stop after this next puzzle. The game runs at around 6 hours in length and with puzzles growing ever more intricate, having played the flat screen version I can't yet imagine what VR will bring to the mix as the game does look almost identical, but perhaps being able to view these puzzles in a 3D space will open up new new methods of understanding and ultimately beating them. Limelight VR is out December 8th for Quest 2. VR's answer to the Battle Royale boom is getting its next major update in December and bringing with it an exciting new mode. Population 1's 2.0 update brings a creative sandbox to the VR shooter, setting players loose with all the tools they need to make their own levels and environments for custom games, a feature that has been immensely popular in games like Fortnite, spawning endless amounts of custom lobbies and games. For me, I truly believe Pop 1 needs a large scale shakeup to reinvigorate the player base and attract a new, more consistent daily group of users. If it was my call, Pop1 would go free to play with a larger emphasis on skins and battle pass systems, but that's just my two cents. Let's see how the 2.0 update changes things and whether it's enough to bring a much needed attention injection to this excellent VR FPS. The potty-mouthed co-op shooter Gambit is launching onto Quest and PC VR platforms on the 15th of December, bringing with it a wacky arcade shooter campaign that's best experienced with a couple of friends who love nothing more than blasting holes in bad guys. Now, So far I've only gone hands-on with the Quest build of Gambit. Playing solo I found the levels to be densely packed with secrets and unlockables to find, which was a real high point for me. However, the combat felt a little flat with enemies not really doing much to preserve their own lives. It quickly devolved into a run and gun fest and I would have liked to see some more enemy variation to keep the gameplay fresh and exciting. However, with friends it's a completely different experience, blasting waves of enemies, goofing around with spray paint and searching high and low to find the unlockable guns and skins is best experienced on the highest difficulty in a group. If developer X Real Games can keep adding new content, tighten up the enemy AI and throw in a little more variety when it comes to the waves of baddies pouring towards you, then Gambit has the potential to be a solid multiplayer experience with plenty of replayability. One of the most popular VR titles of the last few years continues to grow and expand with meaningful new content, and the next adventure is coming on the 15th of December. Demio's brand new Reign of Madness scenario pits players up against the Mad Elven King and takes place in a great looking overworld setting that breaks away from the dungeons of previous campaigns. It throws players into the streets and back alleys of a town. The update also adds some brand new non-playable NPCs like the Sellsword and Beggar, as well as some more surprises 
features that will no doubt be unveiled closer to launch. The endless stream of free content for Demio shows a real commitment to the player base and makes it an exceptionally easy game to recommend for fans of traditional tabletop or D&D action. I can't wait to get the band back together and tackle this new adventure on the 15th of December. The final new VR game for December 2022 is Arcade Legend. Rumours are swirling about this one releasing this month, but no official confirmation has been made as of yet, so do take this one with a pinch of salt. Arcade Legend lets you build your very own arcade from the ground up, from the carpet to the wallpaper, the placement of the machines to exactly which machines you have is all down to you as the new manager of this previously run down unit. You can play the games yourself, earn tickets, and then use the tickets to buy prizes. It's exactly like going to a real arcade except the machines aren't sticky here and it won't cost you £4,000 in pennies to win a lollipop and a bouncy ball. In the demo I played a while back, the big tease at the end was an unlockable bowling alley, so I'm really excited to see what surprises the full release has in store, especially considering this one is playable multiplayer and could end up being a great way to hang out with friends virtually. And that's everything for December and for this video. I hope you've enjoyed, guys. If you have, please do leave a like, leave a comment, and hit subscribe. And let me know down in the comments below which of these games, if any, you'll be picking up. I'm pretty sure I'll be spending most of my time in Saints and Sinners Chapter 2, Hubris, and Compound. Yeah, that'll keep me busy throughout December. Take care, guys. I'll see you very soon for another one. See you later.